This video is for parents, gymnasts, and coaches on how to keep gymnasts safe from bad touching. Some of my coaches and I will be educating you on safe training practices and what to do if you are being treated inappropriately by someone. An adult should never be alone with a gymnast. That means during a private lesson, another person needs to be there. All right, it's time for your private lesson. Okay, my mom's coming to watch. During practice or at a meet, any first aid, icing, or taping done by an adult needs to be done in plain sight, not off alone in an enclosed room. Hey, let's go in this other room and ice your ankle. We need to do it out here with everyone else. Coaches should not give car rides to gymnasts. I could give you a ride home if you need one. No, I can call my mom. Coaches should never meet up with a gymnast outside of the gym and should never be alone with a gymnast during team travel situations. Hey, let's go to Starbucks and talk about your new routine. Let's do it here with everyone else. Adults must not be alone with a gymnast in a locker room or changing room. Coaches should not take pictures of gymnasts without their parents' permission. Hey, let me take a picture of you doing that back handspring. No, my mom said no pictures. Okay. A coach should never provide gifts, privileges, or special favors to an individual gymnast. I got this just for you. Sorry, I can't accept that. Oh yeah, that's right. Any emails or texts that a coach needs to send out should be sent to the parents, not the gymnasts themselves. And there should be no chatting between a gymnast and a coach on social media. Hey, I'll text you about the times for the competition tomorrow. No, it's fine, you can text my mom. <laughs> Appropriate touch versus inappropriate touch. An adult should not be touching a gymnast unless it's needed for teaching, spotting, or keeping the gymnast safe. The sport of gymnastics does require a lot of touching from coaches. So we're going to talk about what kinds of touch are appropriate and not appropriate. First of all, people have areas of their body that are private that nobody should touch. For girls, this would be an area covered by a bikini. For boys, it would be the area covered by the underwear. There are many, many times in gymnastics where it is actually necessary for your coaches to touch you. We will now show you some appropriate spotting techniques. Gymnastics is a fast sport and mistakes do sometimes happen. If someone does touch you in a private area, how do you know if it is a bad touch or not? If it hardly ever happens, or if it's only barely in the bikini area, it's probably fine. But gymnasts, did you know that you have something called intuition? Kind of an inner radar that lets you feel when something is wrong. Pay attention to how you feel. If you're feeling uncomfortable around a certain coach because of the way they touch you, then that means that what they are doing is not okay. Coaches, if you ever do have an accidental slip up, make sure to apologize to the gymnast right away and let their parents know what happened and apologize to them as well. It's important to have complete transparency, no secrecy. There are other areas of concern besides spotting. While stretching or conditioning, coaches should not sit or lie on a gymnast and they should not face each other while in a straddle position. A coach should never put a gymnast on their lap. And remember, it's not appropriate for a coach to pat a gymnast on the rear. Getting help. Gymnasts, I want you to do something right now. I want you to choose in your mind two or three adults outside of the gym who you can completely trust. 
It could be a parent, grandparent, teacher, or anyone else who would do anything to help you. Now, if you have a problem right now, or if you ever have a problem in the future with a coach touching you in a bad way, you need to tell one of those trusted adults. If the first adult doesn't listen to you, doesn't believe you, or doesn't help you, tell one of the other adults you chose. Keep telling until you find someone who will help. Keep in mind, it's not enough to just tell one of your friends. You need to tell an adult who could actually help you. Tattling versus telling. I'm sure lots of adults in your life have told you not to tattle, but there is a difference between tattling and telling. Telling is for the purpose to keep people safe. Tattling is when you just want someone to get in trouble. Telling is for when you need the help of an adult. Tattling is when it's something you can solve yourself. Telling is for something when it's important. Tattling is for something when it's unimportant. If a coach touches you inappropriately, that is a time where telling is needed. Tell a trusted adult immediately. Parents, take these reports seriously. Adults, if a child comes to us with reports of sexual abuse, it's extremely important that we listen to them, believe them, and take immediate action to help them. Then we must follow through to make sure the issue gets completely resolved and that the child is safe. It's our job to keep kids safe. Our responses in these situations will dictate whether or not they'll keep coming to us for help. We can't let them down. Gymnasts, if something bad happens to you, you should report it immediately. But remember, it's never too late to tell someone. If an adult touches you inappropriately, speak up, speak loud, and don't stop until you're heard. Remember, you are important, you are powerful. Do not stand for it if someone tries to mess with you. This video is dedicated to all the gymnasts who've been hurt by Larry Nasser. April 13th is National Gymnastics Teal Day. We will be wearing teal to show our love and support for these victims and to show support for safe training practices like the ones we talked about in this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that watching this video will open up more conversations about this subject between gymnasts, parents, and coaches. This is an important subject that should not be ignored.